Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie and today we are back with another dun, dun, dun. mukbang. Woo. 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 So today we have these delicious they look a little bit crazy. They, they're cooked, I swear. But technically, it doesn't even have to be cooked because it's like A5 Wagyu. Oof. I don't know how that works, but we have this Wagyu burger that I saw online. It's like a bajillion dollars. It's and a I Michelin thought. Star. Oh yeah, a Michelin star. Where that was it? So good. We decided to recreate it ourselves. It comes with the black burger buns, the Wagyu, the $1 cheese. I mean, it's gonna be <laughs> fantastic. And then we paired it with Alfredo truffle pasta, mm. which looks out of this world. And I just want to say something, okay? Other than the times that I spend money on food, because, I mean, <laughs> this is an expensive meal. I want to preserve the things that I spend money on. I want to make sure that they are kept in pristine condition, that they last, especially if it's something as important and as expensive as my freaking phone. And that's kind of hard to do when you're a clumsy bitch like me. I am the queen of thinking that I can balance 2,900 things on my hand only to drop all of them at once. There was this one time I was mm. straight up trying to open a, a door handle with a cup of coffee in my hand, my phone, my keys, my wallet, and my dog leashes, and I ended up dropping everything, and like I had already opened the door, uh -huh. so the coffee is inside the house, not even outside the house, but at least my phone didn't break. It didn't even crack. It didn't even scratch. You wanna know why? Case the five. Yeah, thank you so much. Hey. <laughs> okay. So I have been using case to my phone cases for years. Every time I upgrade my phone, you better know that I am upgrading my case to my phone case. I have it too. Exactly. I love their new impact and ultra impact phone cases because they're so sturdy. I'm a clumsy girl. They're drop test approved for 6.6 .6 feet for their impact and their ultra impact is 9.8 feet. On top of that, they're made out of 65% recycled and plant-based material and all the packaging that they're shipped in is 100% recyclable. They have so many designs, they have collaborations with small artists, collaborations with big names like K-pop stars, and you can even custom your own design. The cases are so thin. The Ultra Impact case, I think it's only like 13 millimeters thin. And the collaborations that they do, they're so pretty. Like I can literally get lost on Case Defy's website and I'm like, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want all of it. I wanna do a custom one with my dog's faces on there. They're wireless charging and 5G compatible. Case Defy is also one of those companies that's like, listen, to the audience. The case itself is antimicrobial. It has a coating and it kills 99% mm. of bacteria on your phone and the cases are non-toxic, non-hazardous. And if you're like, wait, I really want a case to my phone case, but what should I do with my current case? Case if I actually has a super cool zero waste mission. So they'll take your old phone cases and recycle them, transform them into brand new phone cases. Mm. They'll even take phone cases that aren't from case to to help you recycle. So make sure to check out case to linked in the description or go to case slash biz or use code one five biz to get 15% off your new favorite phone case. And thank you Case Defy for sponsoring today's video and let's get into the food. Okay, so here's the thing. You're like, why is there two? Um, I tried to make three. I tried to make three Wagyu burgers. And <laughs> it was the hardest thing in the world. These two barely made it out. If I open the lid, if I open the top, you're gonna be like, this is so not Michelin. You just wanna see? Look at that. <laughs> okay, just cover it back up. Cover it back up. Nobody needs to see that. It's creative. So we can just like split it. I just it don't somehow. know how they like eat it. Yeah. Oh, you need it like a big like, Yeah, okay. Egg. Exactly. Den Den, you're a growing boy. Yes, I'll sir. give you one. Well, I don't know. I he think said... I'm done growing, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Not a roll of Wagyu. Wagyu and then, okay, honey, but... I'm going to take the first okay, I'll just take bite, this. and mm. then I will share with you. So you're so excited, dude. Okay. Oh, you know what? That's smart. Wait, Den Den, dip yeah. it in a sauce and then put there the. There's already sauce inside, babe. Yeah, but I want more sauce. You know? mm. Okay. Wait, you're mm. not going to use this, right? Um, I guess not. Yeah. Okay. okay. Wow. Are you ready? You don't have to do all of it. Mm. Okay, so it's, it's like the bun is the same, right? Like, it tastes the same? I have no idea, then. then. I never had it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He goes. <laughs> Tabasco. Tabasco. <laughs> all right. That's and an A5 Wagyu burger. Whoa. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Good or not good? Wow. Okay. What, honey? You just ruined the burger. No, I'm giving you half the burger. Huh. Huh. Mom. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Wow. What is it? Oh my god. It's kind of good. Is it good? Busting, bro. Like, oh my god. The meat is so good. It's so juicy. The bun's pretty good too. It's a yeah, little different. Yeah, the bun is like different. It's not the oh, same. Oh, the bun is different too. So it's not just color. Mm-mm. 
Mmm. Mmm. Wow. Holy cow. Show them the inside, Nana. Mmm. It's so juicy. Just mm. melts, bro. It just melts. I like that it's not ground like a burger. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Okay, shall we try so this? It's like um, rolled up. Really fancy looking pasta. Thank you so that much. That Stephanie made. Wow. Wow, let's see. It looks so It's cheesy. like a perfect, it fits in the chopsticks, so it's like a flag. <laughs> Oh. Mm. Mm. That's mm. creamy. Mm-hmm. Mm. 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 Not bad. Wow. Very creamy. Pretty good job. Mm-hmm. Wow. I did an extra creamy one. Wow. Very good. But the burger though? Wow. Wow. <laughs> the burger is better. I mean they're both pretty good. Oh my god. I'm gonna add sriracha. some sriracha oh to my, my alfredo down here. You're wild. You wanna try some? Oh, I wish I had some Simba Oleg. Mm? Mm. Mm. <laughs> wow. I'm so happy right now. I'm just trying to enjoy some of our food before we get into today's video because it's disgusting. It's nasty. And it makes you really. <laughs> and it makes you really concerned about going to buffets and. Going to the club and <laughs> do you see where this is going? I love People, buffets. Really, what's your favorite? What kind of buffet do you like? It used to be sushi restaurant. Mm-hmm. But I feel like they are a little, little like downgraded. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what I heard. That's not going. Yeah, I used to love buffets too. And then I got sick enough times in Vegas, and now I'm terrified of buffets. Every time I think it's gonna be different. Every time she's like, I'm never going to this buffet but again. But then you go again. Next time she's like. Shall we do it? <laughs> <laughs> and then get disappointed again. No, I don't get disappointed. I get food poisoning. What? <laughs> Bro. Listen, the concept of a buffet is literally up my alley. <laughs> it just doesn't work for some reason for my stomach. I don't know what it is. Wait, the Vegas one? Like the, that buffet? Mm. Are we talking about the same buffet. one? But I went to like so many. five oh. different buffets in Vegas. Every time. I had so much food poisoning, I almost didn't make it back to LA. Jeez. You didn't have a single good experience? No. I don't oh. know why. I love buffets, especially the Vegas one. And I bet your ass, if I go next month, for example, <laughs> you'll catch me at a buffet. You'll catch me vlogging. You'll catch me <laughs> filming a mukbang at a buffet. I can't resist. Are you kidding? But I will get sick for sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Last bite. This Wagyu burger is insane. Way better. I can't believe I did this. Wow. That was not me, that's tiger farting. <laughs> tiger. You can't tiger. do that. Tiger. Mm -mm. Last mm. bite, I swear. So good. Mm. Mm. Wow, these pasta are fancy, honey. Mm -hmm. I've never seen them so chunky. <laughs> Look at that. Have you seen them so chunky, Nana? Nah. Usually it's like so small. Where'd you get this? Um, yeah, where'd this you get type it of from? Pasta, pasta. Italy. What? Mm -hmm. Like an actual country? Mm -hmm. Italy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh shoot. Mm -hmm. No wonder it's good. He said, Sh "Is this what the Italians be eating?" <laughs> I'm in mm. shock. I'm in awe. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's not gonna be good any longer. If you're eating with us, you better hurry it up. <laughs> you're scaring me. Have you ever thought about confessions on Reddit? I mean, I had this thought mm -hmm. of confessions in general on the internet, and I think it's kind of terrifying that people can go online and anonymously confess to the worst shit that they've ever done in their lives. And it almost makes them feel good. They almost, some people get off on it. It's the weirdest thing. Confessions on Reddit are absolutely out of this world. They're terrifying. There are people out there that think like this and it just makes you don't, you just don't understand. People out there, there are some who willingly spread illnesses that they have. Mm. <sighs> mm. <sighs> are we talking about I know what you mean. like STDs? No, this might be, the this C? is just as worse. It's very bad. I just don't get that. Those like, are, oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. It's like, if I'm gonna die, you're dying with me. Something like that. I don't understand. It's like, but they're not even, I feel like they're even past that. It's like they almost get some sort of sick pleasure for every person they infect. Like, mm -hmm. right. Mm-hmm. Like, it's like they hate the world. Yeah. You know? It's so creepy. 
I, do, I feel like it's almost self-conscious to not want to be sick around people or to not transmit diseases because it's embarrassing because you're like, oh my God, I'm so embarrassed, right? Like that I gave this to you. Mm -hmm. But this is next level. Like people need to be institutionalized immediately. So this guy posted his confession on a subreddit called the Confession Subreddit. And he said he had an obsession, a fetish really, mm -hmm. of spreading parasites. But it goes deeper than that. It's hurting everyone around him. So let's call this guy Jack. He said it all started when he was young. He caught pinworms. Yeah, mm, worms. Pinworms. It's like a parasite. All these little worms inside mm -hmm. of you and shit. Uh. And it's uh, it's not a good feeling. He described it as this weird feeling where he was super itchy and it was pretty painful. But everybody else said it was disgusting. Like it is. You get a headache. Every part of your body hurts. It's not one where you just feel like, ooh, I'm just kind of itchy somewhere. Ooh. Drink some water is spicy. It's worse than that. But thankfully, his parents took him to the hospital and he was given medicines and he got rid of the worms. But even when he was young, he could never shake this feeling. The feeling that these worms, they were inside of him and his body was being used as the worms world. It was their only source of life. It was almost like he was a planet and the worms were living inside of him. They needed him to live. It was almost like they were his, his children of sorts. It was fascinating, really. And after that, since that day he was mm -hmm. young, he was addicted to researching about pinworms, other worms, parasites. He found out that the human body naturally is a host for a ton of parasites like Demodex. So right now, Demo what? if you got really strong magnifying glasses and mm -hmm. zoomed in and in and in on your eyelashes. Oh yeah. You have bugs on your eyelashes living Are you kidding me? on your eyelashes. What? What? He said, what? On your eyelashes. Like bugs or worms? Bugs. They look like that little beetles. gross, bro. Beetles. Yeah. Is they it harmful? Like bugs. No. I mean, obviously, I, it's not right. I know there's dust mites, right? Yeah. That's yeah. Stephanie's deadly allergic to. <laughs> like, yeah. deadly. But they're like everywhere. Yeah. I, I remember like when I was in middle school, mm -hmm. I loved watching like, I think it was like Animal Planet, but it was like they show <sighs> the parasite se ah. section. Mm -hmm. I, I just find it interesting. And it's kind of gross, but yeah. Bruh. Bruh. I can't watch this. I get so scared. Like tapeworm. Oh, like, stop, get, stop, oh, stop, stop. Have you ever had tapeworms or something? No. Uh, I don't know if I did or not. I have a recollection of freaking out that I had worms <laughs> when I was a kid. I don't know if it actually was worms or if someone just told me, like, I am assuming my sister told me it was worms. <laughs> I bet it's like jelly worms. <laughs> most likely, I probably was sick and my sister convinced me it was worms. Oh I think that's the most probable thing. Or maybe I did have worms at one point. I don't know. We'll never know. <laughs> I did have lice though. I did. Um, did you? Yeah, lice? Yeah, like twice in my life. Like, you just want to like <laughs> itch your head so bad. And then my mom had to take me out of school. Like the whole school was shut down. Everybody had lice. No way. And because of you? <laughs> no, oh. I literally don't even know where I got it. I got it from someone from school. Um, and every yeah, single- patient zero. No. <laughs> <laughs> and every single parent was sent like flyers on how to get rid of lice. Oh my God. And yeah, and you had to use these really thin brushes and they come oh. out, they're like little bugs. Oh. And then you have to kill them because they can go to your dogs and stuff. Ah. And I remember sitting there and every time I'm looking in the mirror and I don't know why I remember this part so vividly. Every time my mom would um, <laughs> go like this, my face would go, <laughs> ah. <laughs> ow! He said it was invigorating that he knew that the human could host so many parasites without putting their health in serious risk. Now, this curious question has been on his mind for years, just plaguing every single second of his being, of his existence. But now that he's 25 years old, Jack feels like he's been studying them long enough for over 10 years that he started purposefully infecting himself with non-lethal parasites. Okay. He started giving what? himself pinworms and tapeworms. What? He said it's part of his fetish. Some worked, some didn't. Some worked better than others. A lot of parasites had given him diarrhea, fevers, pain, itchiness, but most of it has been bearable. So right now he has pinworms, tapeworms, and various oh non-pathogenic protozoa and pubic lice, like lice down there, bruh. Ew. Yeah. Where? <laughs> a damn near. Oh, down there. A damn near in your gotcha, butthole. Gotcha, okay, gotcha. yeah. So now Jack oh. is an extreme oh. masochist. So oh. he loves the pain. He loves the uncomfortableness. He loves like feeling that he did it to himself and like he deserves the pain, oh. right? 
and he just kind of gets off on the whole process. And he said the plus side, this is like a random plus side, is because of the parasites, he can eat a lot more food and still be thin. Um. Which is really questionable, right? Mm -hmm. But it's not even just about being thin for him. That's just a side effect. He loves his parasites. He feels like they're his children. He keeps multiple <sighs> cultures of bed bugs and leeches in containers. Bed bugs? Leeches? Yeah, bed bugs are the. Bro. bro. Bed bugs? Do you what's know what? What's bed bug? It's like little jumping bugs, right? In your bed, and your bed. there's no way to kill them. You can't get rid of like it. Like jumping bugs? Yeah. Like little, tiny little. They're so tiny. Like, oh. I heard the minute you got bed bugs, you might as well burn your house down. Like, you're oh, never gonna get rid of them. For real? Like, I think you have to take out every piece of furniture and, like, vent your house and do crazy shit. Have exterminators come in, and even then. It's questionable. Yeah. Like, if your bed is infected with bed bugs, you can't even, like, take it out, hose it down, and bring it back in. Like, your bed is gone. You have to buy all oh new furniture. Oh, my God. Yeah. Wait, what does it look like? It's just tiny bugs. Like fly? Like, no, it's way smaller. Like, tiny, tiny, oh. tiny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tiny. Does it do any harm to you? Yeah, it bites you. Bruh, it you're bites itchy. You. Oh, yeah. my God. That's so good. I have goosebumps right now. What's your <laughs> least favorite bug? A cockroach. Mm. Mm. Just no, seriously, I can't. <laughs> Especially when they have wings, like it's- <laughs> Oh, when they have wings, bro, game <sighs> over. I can't bro, sleep. when they have wings. I can't sleep. Oh my god. Every time I see a cockroach, I know for a fact we're in a simulation. <laughs> what? This is not natural. <laughs> this is like someone who is sitting there on their computer coming up with, how do we terrorize these losers? Uh -huh. And they're like, oh, we're gonna make this nasty thing that can survive a nuclear bomb whoa, whoa. <laughs> cockroaches apparently can survive a nuclear bomb i don't know if it's no true no way it's true like nah. obviously if it explodes yeah. on them they can't but i don't think radiation does anything to them jeez they might even get stronger you know they strong get... like mutation yeah. yeah oh heck no <laughs> yeah. so jack says he takes out the leeches and lets them suck his blood but they're not as passion inducing as his other parasites because he actually likes parasites that live in the human body for a long time but he does like the sensation of them sucking his blood. Mm -hmm. But that's not the confession. No, no, no. Oh. That's the beginning. <clears throat> that's the only the beginning. This is the confession. These days, his fetish has grown, to say the least. His obsession is no longer infecting himself. His new fetish, his new desire, is to spread his children and infect others. What? And sometimes, he wants to confess he's done it. His family has caught pinworms multiple times, sometimes unknowingly, sometimes he spreads them on purpose. Jack has infected strangers and friends and even his own family, and he knows it's bad. He just can't stop himself. He thinks that he has a parasite in his brain that makes him feel like he needs to spread parasites. He says, I know that this sounds crazy, but if you knew the feeling, you would understand. He what said, feeling? Just the satisfaction, the fetish of like getting off when you know that you're infecting people with parasites. He said maybe it's mental illness, maybe it's just parasites. All he knows is that it feels good to do these things. He says the parasites are like his children and when he spreads them, he feels good about himself. So what does he do? This is so weird. He sprinkles tapeworm eggs into people's <gasps> drinks at the clubs. So now, you don't even just have to be worried about being roofied at the club. You have to be worried about catching tapeworms. Is that illegal? Yeah. He said he also caught pubic lice from sex with a random woman. And he wanted to have sex with this random woman at the club because he wanted to give her pinworms. But instead, she gave him pubic lice and he said it was the best gift ever. <laughs> it was like the ultimate <laughs> win. He fuck? hit the jackpot. So weird. And since then, he's been sleeping with more women to spread the pubic lice. Oh my gosh. He said sometimes he sprinkles the worm eggs at the hot buffets wherever he goes. Oh <gasps> my god. Oh my god. And like, oh my god, dude. He said, yeah, I understand. You think it's gross and it's messed up and I'm basically betraying my own species for these parasites. But I love my parasites and my fetish is too hard to control. I don't want to hurt anyone when I do these things, but it's just a force that I can't deny. Like it's beyond my understanding and it drives me to do it. It feels biological. I think maybe I have a parasite in my brain because I just, I need to. Is this credible? See, I don't know if it's credible or not. I don't yeah. think he would lie about that though. It's giving me some like science fiction type of vibe. See, that's what you think, right? I don't know if this guy's lying or not, 
But I know there's people out there that do this. Oh, for yeah. Sure. yeah. For sure. I know people who does it for revenge. Yes. Yeah. So but this guy does it for kink. I don't know. Maybe Maybe's someone like has a medical background can verify. Like, mm -hmm. is it that easy to to spread um, whatever eggs? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Don't they die? Don't like? Don't they have to be certain environment to live? Or maybe? I don't think so. uh, maybe it's like room yeah. temperature. I don't know. Yeah. I read the comments and they said that maybe you can't um, spread eggs mm -hmm. because they're pretty microscopic. But yeah. what you can do is like itch parts of your skin and like sprinkle your skin dust and you could spread <laughs> what? yeah that's like going like, too far for pinworms they said all you really have to do is touch your butthole and then touch a piece of food or touch a edge of a glass wait so why and you could spread it because we have no he here. has worms there oh, oh. on that part so I don't know, because I don't know anything about parasites, really. Um, I'm itchy. Yeah, me yeah. too. But that's what the comments uh, said. And everyone was like, it's pretty easy to spread parasites. He says that he just wishes people could be more like him. That they would be more open-minded and learn to live with the parasites and not try to kill them. What? I think the guy either is lying or he's got a really crazy kink. But he's talking I, like he's boasting, kind can of. Can this be kink? I mean, I don't know what you could call it. Like an illegal kink. <laughs> like a, like a like, sexual preference. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, like, come on. It, uh, it sounds dangerous, too. It's even to himself. It's incredibly dangerous, yeah. yeah. So... But, the, I mean, I just learned from a podcast research that there's mm -hmm. castration kinks where there are some men out there that have the kink of wanting someone to chop off all their private parts. Mm -hmm. So, speaking of the terror that people bring onto this world, have you guys seen the Burger King Lettuce Man? No, but I saw Burger King. Bruh. <laughs> Let me tell you what happened on 4chan, okay? This was back in 2012. On 4chan, a picture went viral. Like, just took the internet by storm. And I think I've seen some viral TikToks recently of people doing very similar things, which is so disgruntling. But some employee of a fast food restaurant went on to post a picture of themselves standing on two buckets of lettuce, like bins of lettuce that were already chopped and prepped, ready to use for salads and burgers and all of these things. He was standing on them with his dirty boots okay. and took a picture and boasted about it. His caption read, if you eat at Burger King, this is what's in your lettuce. So he was contaminating what? the food and stepping on the bins of food. I don't get that. Like he posted it himself? Yeah, he posted it himself. And everyone wanted to figure out who the forker was and throw him in jail. Uh -huh. But the guy was wearing all black. There was no uniform tag. The boots and the lettuce were all black. Like there was no identifying tattoo, no picture of his head. It was just from his body mm -hmm. in the lettuce, right? Mm -hmm. The yeah. only re reason we even know that it's Burger King is because he said if you eat at Burger King in the caption. So everyone, watch, it's a watch. McDonald's. Yeah. <laughs> Can I tell you something crazy? Or Wendy's. Okay, I just learned this and I don't know if this is true. I saw a TikTok on it and like, don't believe everything that you see on TikTok, but I, I just found out about this. I don't know if it's true, but apparently uh -huh. Louis Vuitton would send people. So let's say you are a celebrity okay. and you're wearing a lot of Louis Vuitton and you're getting paparazzi. Like you bought Louis Vuitton with your own money. You're Louis Vuitton back. Okay. Yeah. And Louis Vuitton thinks you're trashy and they don't want Louis Vuitton associated with you. So what Louis Vuitton would do is go buy Gucci bags and send it for free to the celebrities. Shut the front door. No so way. apparently they did this with like Snooki from Jersey. Shore, she was like always seen in a Louis Vuitton bag, and so Louis Vuitton would go buy Gucci bags and give her PR packages of free Gucci bags. No way, this can't be real. I heard it's real on TikTok, and all the comments are like, Oh, yeah, yeah, a lot of brands do this. I don't a know, lot of brands do I don't this. know, if they Yo. still do this, <laughs> bro. Oh, they'd be play, playing chess, yeah, like a mind game chess. while we'd be playing tic tac toe. I mean, I would love Gucci too. <laughs> yeah, I don't mind Gucci, it makes sense, no. God. Yeah, like these brands are so big on like that upper class image, right? Yeah, but aren't they losing money? You want Louis Vuitton because BTS wears Louis Vuitton. You want Louis Vuitton because Emma Chamberlain wears Louis Vuitton. You don't want Louis Vuitton because oh, that weirdo. Their design celebrity. was nice. Oh, <laughs> yeah, but you know, like certain brand brands is, is associated with a certain image. Ah, uh. I guess they don't want their image to be different. Yeah. Mm. So, anyways, apparently he worked at Burger King. Everyone on 4chan goes crazy. Within 20 minutes, 4chan catches the guy. You want to know how he caught the guy? What? Oh, he didn't remove the EXIF data. So anytime you upload a picture, oh, here's a good tip for everyone. If you are sending a picture to someone that you're texting online mm -hmm. or someone you're chatting with online mm -hmm. and they can download the picture after you sent it, mm -hmm. take a screenshot of the picture. 
So if I take a selfie right now, and yeah. I've been practicing this recently, so like I take a selfie. Maybe you text me. I just met you online, and you're like, "Hey, can you send me a selfie?" I take a selfie. Okay. Yeah. Then I go to the actual photo, and I screenshot it. Why? Because if you send the actual <laughs> selfie, they can download it. And they can see your EXIF data, which gives you the exact coordinates of where you took the picture. Location. Location. Wait, screenshot doesn't have location? No. <gasps> that is I did not know that. Screenshots don't have Insane. EXIF data. What? Are you sure about yeah. that? Yeah, because I realized, like, for example, you're texting, like, a, a Postmate person. Yo! Bro, these phones, are, the photos have so much data on there now. Yeah. When I press the, um, when I press the actual selfie, it has the location, the coordinates, and everything, right? Uh -huh. You see that? Yeah. The location. But the screenshot, it just says the lens and the megabytes. It uh -huh. doesn't have the location. It says add a location. Oh. So you need to screenshot whatever you're sending. So basically, when you take a selfie, screenshot it, and then send it? Send the screenshot. Oh, the, the screenshot, mm -hmm. but not from yeah. You the take app. a picture, yeah, and then you screenshot uh, that picture. So you're making yeah. a copy. But obviously, That's this so is more work. important when you're at home. Like obviously, if you're on vacation, you're right. sending it to someone you trust, like your parents. Right. You don't have to go through all of that. Maybe oh, it's a I'm, good I'm habit. I'm doing that. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm it's a good that. habit. Yeah. Nobody sure. should know yeah. where I've been. <laughs> Nobody except for me. <laughs> so this guy was a dumb and he didn't remove his EXIF data. Uh -huh. And um, they found out his EXIF data, which shows the exact longitude and latitude in which the photo was taken. Oh my so gosh. within 20 minutes, they found the exact Burger King that he worked at. Oh they God. found out his manager, oh and they God. even contacted the local news to run the oh story. Oh my God. Dang. Dang, that guy was so cocky. Yeah. <laughs> and the guy oh. got fired. That's it? That's it. Not jail or anything? I think he got like a fine, Probation. but that's it. But imagine the sheer amount of people that do this without posting it on 4chan. Yeah. And maybe just post it to their friend group chats. Mm. Or their Snapchats. Mm. It's yeah. so terrifying. Speaking of confessions on Reddit, this is another one that's so unsettling in a different way. And we can... <sighs> I mean, just the whole thing is so creepy, right? It was on a post called Odd Pregnancy Questions. It is, it's on a subreddit. Now, I imagine this is where a bunch of pregnant people are asking about pregnancy cravings, weird moles, weird discharge, like things like that. But this poster wrote, long story short, I'm pregnant fr from my biological brother and I have no idea what to do. I don't want to go to the doctor and have them find out because, you know, this is... I don't know, is this patient phys physician privilege? Does that cover this? Because incest is completely illegal. I don't know what to do. Am I gonna go to jail? I'm kind of scared. Should I get an attorney? I'm so confused. So the subreddit blew up with this post. I mean, people start asking a million questions like, was it consensual? And she responded, I like how you just assume that my brother would essay me. Yeah, it was consensual. Wait a minute, why is she getting defensive? <laughs> She's like really wild, this whole thing is so wild. And she even said that they kind of planned to have a kid together. And she said, although I probably should have figured out all this stuff beforehand. She said, I treat him like a lover, like we're married, and if we could be married, that would have been amazing. Now, I do require testing because there are a lot of risks associated with siblings having children, and I do want to keep the baby. So if you guys didn't know, incest is not one of those things that the government made illegal because it's socially wrong. Like nobody cares that it's socially oh. wrong. Incest is illegal because your baby's gonna come out with five arms. Like it's, there's oh. so many genetic problems with incestuous children and it's so depressing because it's not the child's fault. Like it's, you're literally putting a baby at risk because what, you wanted to fuck your brother? You wanted to be a brother fucker? Like what are you, what are you saying? kind of messed up mm -hmm. now a lot of people asked her how did it start to begin with like how did you even get into a relationship with your brother and she said disclaimer if you're looking for a sex story look somewhere else <laughs> <That's so defensive. laughs> she so said when we were younger about five and ten years old we would go out into the woods and play around all day and we would really often play video games together when we were young mm. now we were both fairly nerdy i guess you could say we didn't think much of it but I think being best friends at the time is kind of what placed this catalyst in our relationship. When we were in our teens, we didn't really get along, of course, but we still played video games sometimes, you know, somewhat often. It was in my later teenage years that I started feeling something for him. This is so bizarre to me because I'm just thinking of like, ew, I'm thinking of like you and like, and my sister and like people that I grew up with. It's like you saw how annoying and gross they were their whole life <laughs> yeah. and like pig in their butt. You're just like, ew. 
Mm-hmm. Ew, ew. The thought that even someone wants to date someone that's related to me, I'm like, ew. <laughs> It's weird. Ew. The whole thing is ill. If Andrew kisses my sister in front of me, I'm like, I'm going to gag <laughs> right now. Like, if I think too hard about how my nieces were made, I'm like, oh, yeah, they just, it, like, magically happened. Birds and the bees. I don't even, ugh. If I had to, like, actually, oh, yeah, they had sex, ugh, I would gag. So the fact that she's, like, I started getting attracted to it. Bizarre, no? Yeah. So bizarre. She said, I wasn't sure at first what this whole feeling was, but eventually I knew it because I was in love with him. She said that I didn't know that society thought being with your brother was wrong at the time, but I still knew enough that I should keep it a secret. In one of my biology classes, the topic of incest was brought up by one of the students, and what the student said crushed me. So I guess the student was like, oh, incest is disgusting and it produces, you know, um, children that are genetically vulnerable, right, to risks mm. and stuff. And she just felt so sad about it. She said she almost broke down in the middle of class. Wow. She said, I thought it would be natural for me to want to be with my brother as he's the one that I grew up with. We ate together, we lived together, and we played together our whole lives. How could I possibly trust anyone else to spend my life with? Um. That's the whole point, babes. You can spend your whole life with your brother as a brother and sister. That's the whole point. A family no like they're always gonna be in your life and you're close with them and like you trust them forever because uh-huh. it's your family you don't have to sleep with them who forgot to tell you that <laughs> i mean i, I think i'll get sick of my sibling <laughs> but you see her like once a month and you're already <laughs> sick of her <laughs> and the, isn't that the whole point like if you you have a lot of relationships mm. but your sibling is always there but your you know significant other comes and goes maybe but not us you know we're in it for the long run oh. whatever <laughs> <laughs> So anyways, she said she ran into the woods that night and cried and she wanted to die. She started feeling jealous when he would talk to other girls. And uh, and also, I am truly one of those people that I don't care who you date as long as it's legal. I don't care. You could date whoever your heart desires. But this is not legal for a reason because children are at risk. She started feeling jealous when he would talk to other girls. And when he was a senior in high school, she just wanted nothing more than to be his prom date. And that was like her ultimate fantasy. Oh my gosh. So after the both of them graduated high school, they both had similar plans and they moved in together as roommates. Like, you know, siblings live Wait, together but as roommates. Is there like brother sister go to prom? prom together? I don't Oh, but she definitely doesn't want to go like that. I know, I know, but are there brother sister? There might though? be. Maybe, but yeah. I just rarely see it. I could see like twins going together if they don't have dates. Mm. But not doing the whole prom poses, you know? Like for fun. Like yeah, just going like, with friends. Yeah, right, right, like right. a group of friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, I could see that. Right. But I can't see like, like the kissing. prom pic. Like but... a back hug yeah. thing? Oh, <laughs> oh God. <laughs> oh, God. Back hugs are so intimate. Oh, That's weird. Back <laughs> hugs. Bro, side hugs are for everyone. That Just everyone that I feel like I need to hug, I give them a side hug. Mm-hmm. Front hugs, one of us is crying. Or it's you. Yeah. Back hug is for like... Back fam- hug is like... Family. Wifey. No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> he said back Me? hug is for siblings. <laughs> back hug is like... Like you love... It. Like I feel your butt. <laughs> like no. you feel my butt. Oh, I thought it was like back to back. <laughs> 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 so then she said after they moved in together, they would sit on the couch and watch movies and they would play games sometimes. Mm. And over time, I guess they got closer and closer and eventually he broke up with his girlfriend. And she says again, I don't know why, but when he did, I just felt so happy. I just felt so happy and nothing really changed until he wanted to buy a house (coughs) and he wanted to help. He wanted me to help him pick the house. And I got mm. all sorts of crazy thoughts. And now I, I just thought in my head, I, it felt like I was his girlfriend, like making him, helping him pick such a big decision, which is so gross because I feel like I took my sibling house hunting, you know? Uh-huh. What are you saying? She, uh, she said, I don't know what impelled, impelled me to say this, but I asked him one night if I could kiss him. <gasps> and he got so red in the face, he didn't say anything. But later that night, He's like, hey, do you want to go somewhere for fun? Mm-hmm. Do you want to go downtown? Let's oh get dinner. God. And she never got a kiss and she never got a hug, but it just made her feel so good that she had the privilege of like being on a date with him. And oh she wishes God. that he took her virginity that night. Oh. But he didn't. And she cried in public or she cried in pirate. 
Pirate. Pirate. <laughs> but soon after, they moved in together. They started <gasps> making things official, and they oh. started fucking around together. So when did the the guy, the brother, have affection? Like soon after that, since she was she was giving him the a okay. I guess he like went in for it, and uh, he gave her a ring. <gasps> and she loves it so much. It's oh her God. most prized possession. She said it's magnetic. So anytime they hold magnetic. hands, it pulls the like rings this? together. <laughs> oh, uh, that's weird. That's kind of cute. I've never though. heard that before. It's cute until you're like on your refrigerator and you can't. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, no, I, one one. <laughs> I have an emergency. <laughs> like it's. <laughs> It's wild. And she said that um, being forced to leave him would rip her to shreds. And it just makes her so angry when anyone ever accuses her relationship of being abusive or non-consensual. Like, this is love. Mm. <sighs> I mean, the commenters on Reddit went in on her. Like, they did not give her a single comforting word of like, oh, babes, it's going to be okay. They said, I'm going to give you the dose of reality that you sorely need incest is taboo and illegal because of the serious genetic risk the children conceived in an incestuous relationship it's not illegal because society is judging you for your relationship mm. it's because of the babies you guys are both going to need to submit to some serious genetic testing so that any issues that can be screened for your child can be found a regular test just isn't gonna fucking cut it but if you tell anyone, you run the very real risk of legal action. Now, I'm not talking a ticket or a fine. I'm talking you're on the sex offender registry. You guys are going to have a hard time finding work, a place to live. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, well. Yeah. Grumpy. And she was, to, uh, the OP was saying, well, it's just a legal thing. Like, at the end of the day, we're a family unit. We're going to provide for this kid. And mm. the kid's going to have a normal life. And everyone in the comments said, no fucking way. Absolutely not. I got made fun of in school because I had glasses and I came home crying every single day because of the mocking. At least, yeah, a couple times a week. Can you imagine how nasty it's going to be for your completely innocent child for their entire fucking life because mommy and daddy are brother and sister? Yeah. I mean, they have a 0% chance at a normal life. They will be judged forever because you and your brother are gross and irresponsible. You see how I'm judging you? And I'm a random internet stranger and I'm a fucking liberal. I don't give a if you and your brother want to wine and dine at Golden Corral and go home for sex afterwards, I care that you're dumb enough to not only conceive a child, but you did it on purpose. So can you imagine how much judgment you're going to get in person? Dang. <laughs> That's brutal. So, um, but OP, she stuck with it. She doubled down. She put her foot in the quicksand and she said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to strangle myself today. What? She argued that it's her right to commit incest. What? She said as long as people have sex with their relatives consensually and it's like not encouraged, like your mom's not like, hey, you should go f*** your brother. Um, <laughs> if it just happens naturally, she thinks it's perfectly fine because it's just like how you would find any other person on the street or the mall or the bar. Mm, I don't know if that's how it works. Yeah. She said she didn't choose to be attracted to her brother. She did get in a bowl. I can't say the word because I don't want to get, you know. Mm -hmm. She did. Um, I think people really scared her into being a sex offender. She then updated Reddit again that they told their own mother that they were in a relationship. <gasps> and get this. Get this. She supported? The mom was supportive and not only no that. No way. <laughs> her mom said that the two of her kids remind her of her relationship with her own brother because she used to have a crush on her brother when she was younger. Oh, what oh the frick? And um, this is where a lot of people were commenting and I tried to find the scientific backing for this and I couldn't find it. Mm -hmm. But there are speculations that whatever kinks you have could be heavily genetic. Mm. Is that not disgusting though when you think about it? Oh my god. Yeah, oh my god. Genetic, huh? So that's just what some comments said. I saw some like um, articles that were saying that there is some proof. It's not all nurture. So originally everybody thought it was all environment. Your kinks uh -huh. form from your environment. Uh -huh. But then now scientists, um, a lot of psychiatrists are doing studies that maybe it's proven that it's genetically influenced as well. So any of your family members are could have similar kinks. Like fishermen? What? <laughs> Oh, cuz you wanna... I get it. You wanna reel it in. You wanna reel me in. I'm the fishy. I'm no, the fishy. No. I'm the fishy! No, no nah. She fish. just wants to fish. Yeah, yeah, I'm just... I just like fish, yeah. I still think that first story was crazy. Yeah. yeah. Eesh. Eesh. 
Don't get up a face. I mean, I don't think I have to tell you this. <laughs> but don't be looking at your sibling and getting some weird ideas. <laughs> don't be doing that, no. okay? It's illegal. Mm -hmm. It's illegal. Don't have children yeah. with your... And like, really? You think they're attractive? No. Mm -mm. But you know what's weird? This is where I get so confused. Okay, please leave it in the comments if you have a better understanding of this. But it said that there are studies, and I don't know how accurate these studies are or how big the, the actual study pool was, but they said that guys will date people who more resemble, like if they see um, a group of women, okay. they will choose them by the most attractive to least attractive. The most attractive resemble female relatives, whether it's their mom or their sister, or look the most like out of the whole group. No. And it's, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first of all, my sister, my mom, I mean, no, no shade or anything, but they don't look like Kendall Jenner, you know? <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? Like, <sighs> I think your sister, Looks like Asian Kendall Jenner. I think your sister looked like you. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so why would I date myself, you know? But that, no, that's what I heard. People like to date people who looks like them, yeah. themselves. Oh, have you seen that Instagram no. she went to the game? Siblings are dating. There's an Instagram that's a picture of like two people and it's siblings are dating. And a lot of them, you guess siblings, but a lot of them, they're dating. Yeah. Because because yeah. what you just used to your face in the mirror. So you find it more attractive. You find it you're more used to it. like you know you're used to it. Really? Yeah. I, I don't think so for me. And then we see his future girlfriend, future girlfriend and she's literally exactly a carbon like copy him. of you. <laughs> she got the hairstyle the same and everything. <laughs> <laughs> she's just your twin. Yeah, I'm changing my hair soon. So, so you're saying you he looks like you? What? <laughs> what? Do we look like siblings though? No. Yeah, we don't get look alike. No. That's so strange. We barely ever get the "Oh, are you guys related?" comment, which I, mean, I what? you don't want that though, right? Yeah, but a lot of people get it if you're an Asian couple in the U.S. I don't know why. It's what? just like that's yeah. weird. Yeah. Like, come on, I'm a two. Stephanie's a ten. <laughs> Come on. But sometimes, bro, sometimes I get because sometimes I feel like when we go out in public, uh -huh. what if people are like, oh, that's a cute couple. And that makes me want to kill myself. So already when we go outside, I'm always like, hey, cousin. <laughs> <laughs> or, or are we just like, let's just go to different aisles. Yeah. You know? I'm like, hey, cousin, did you grab the milk <laughs> for mother? Did you grab the Alfredo sauce for dad? I like that. Dad, our dad. Did you ever worry that like if you're out with your sister, that people are gonna think you guys are dating? I mean, I don't really think about that till yeah. now. Yeah. Why am I thinking about that? Now I'm gonna think about that. Yeah. From now on. Well, like even when I go out with Andrew, I'm like, Ugh, I'm oh just my god, them. imagine though. Oh, and then did you know my sister went to the hospital once with my dad, mm -hmm. and they asked no. very politely if my dad was uh it, her her they that they went partner uh, father partner. <laughs> Because I think if you, see, I think it's weirder if you say father and they end up being partners. Uh -huh. So they were like P -p partner, and my uh. sister still talks about it to this day, and she wants to literally Gag. poke her eyeballs <laughs> out and like stab herself in the heart with a chapstick, because she, th the whole ordeal, it's so disgusting. Oh my gosh! Oh and my ever God. since that moment, anytime I go out with my dad, I'm always dad. I never call him dad. I call him Appa, right? Which is dad in Korean. Uh -huh. I go, dad, where are you? Dad. You should just give him a shirt. Just number one dad. I am And then dad. you wear Best number dad. one. Number one daughter. <laughs> Every time you go out. And then uh, I told my sister that. And then she said the most insulting thing ever. What? She said, you don't have to worry. You look just like daddy. And I said, that's so rude. <laughs> But I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Let me know in the comments and make sure to check out Casetify linked in the description. Don't be dropping no tapeworm eggs. Just drop your phone because it's supported, it's safe, and it's, it's a good thing to do. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.